Welcome back to the 99, where we're focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette. And I'm Justin Rodriguez, back again. Oh my gosh, guys. And today, guess what? We talked to the Discord, we talked to the Patreon community, and we wanted to get to the very bottom of what is the proxy problem. And they're going to want to know what we're drinking. They always ask. Do they? What are we drinking? Okay, so today, in case you're wondering, this is a Reposado by Espolon. I might be mispronouncing that. And it is mixed with just a little bit of lime juice, simple syrup, and jalapenos stirred because the oil on the outside of the jalapenos is what makes it spicy. Did not know that. FYI, yeah. The seeds are also pretty spicy too. They're very spicy. We cut those out. Yeah, yeah. we cut those out. <laughs> you can roast it too, and if you roast it, it would add a little bit of char to your drink. Which we is could do good. a cooking channel. I love to cook. Yeah, but that's not today's <laughs> episode. Today we're specifically talking about spicy cards, the rising cost of them, and the issue with proxies. And I say issues lightly. A lot of people agree with them. A lot of people are against them. So what we want to do is get to the root of this proxy problem. So it's important to note that MTG is a TCG first and foremost, and with that come some inherent downfalls. Scarcity of print runs of available cards, their overall rarity and pull rate from the sets they release in, and the issue of certain stable cards being reserve listed. In case you don't know, the reserve list came about due to an outcry of collectors complaining that their cards were losing value due to reprints. As such, since 2011, no cards on the reserve list have been reprinted. This list used to include the likes of Basalt Monolith, Regrowth, and Demonic Tutor, combo in value pieces that were removed from the reserve back in March of 2002. So they have made amendments to the list, but your Dual Lands, your Gaia's Cradle, your Gilded Drake, your Mox Diamond, these are still on the list, and these are absolute staples in our format. Some staples aren't even on the reserve list, but seldom see reprints or receive them in obscure ways. Ergo, Secret Lair. Cards like Imperial Seal, Mana Vault, Chrome Mox, I know, it's one of those cards, it had two prints. And our fetch lands are cards able to receive reprints, but don't often enough. Which ultimately leads us to our topic today, but before we jump into that, guys, if you want to put up your reserve list cards, your secret lair cards secondhand, the best place to do so is TCG Player, you and all know that. TCG Direct is back. It's back! It's back! It's back, babies! <laughs> guys, get those cards quicker and get them in the same envelope if that's necessary to you. But it guys, is, it is. For it, me. For me, it doesn't matter. Like, it's, it's that much more fun when you're opening up that many more presents. Think about Christmas Day. Would it's you true. want all it's your true. gifts in one box, or do you want, like, 18 boxes in the I just want to make tree? sure the gift gets to my door. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, you don't need to worry, because with TCG Direct, it definitely will. And with a lot of the clients they work with on TCG, it's just an online marketplace. You're guaranteed to get your cards. And if not, I've never had issues with, like, refunds or anything of that Never nature. an issue for a refund. Always yeah. got a refund if I need it. Guys, they have the best prices year-round. So if you want to help out the channel indirectly, that is the best way to do so, because any of those proceeds, a portion of which go to the channel uh, if you decide to buy through the link in the description, which I highly encourage. Also, Anchor, Patreon, guys, if you just want to throw money at us, that's the best way to do so. No, if you want to help support the channel directly, that is the best way to do so. It goes to help keep the lights on. You hear people say that, but in my instance, I have literal studio lights that are put on because of you. It's true, actually. <laughs> you have no idea. It you is have actually no idea. true. They're rough times. But guys, um, as you know, Patreon members are going to be thanked in a personal message at the end of this video. So if you are a Patreon member or just a fan of the show and want to dream of being a Patreon member, we'll just pretend your name is being called off at the end of this video. How about that? How about that? <laughs> if your name is Jake, maybe you can be that Jake today. You don't even have to support the channel. We're so off topic. <laughs> We're so off topic. Yeah. We usually are, though, but that's okay. I think that's what makes this show last so long. <laughs> the duration. Every Brew Wars, if you've ever watched it, we need, to, we need to do another Brew Wars. Yes. So, Damn. And those, on, that those same, on, on that same note, guys, if you are in an industry affected by COVID-19, feel free to take care of yourselves and your family first before ever thinking about the show. But I do want to say, on a side note, a lot of things are opening back up, so if you are a fan of the show for our competitive gameplay videos, do expect those soon. Very soon. Hopefully I soon. I really hope so. And a lot of the cards you're going to see in those videos are a lot of the cards we're going to talk about today. The cards that are often proxied. Ergo, those dual lands, those fetch lands, staple copies of cards, and there are many philosophies on whether playgroups should or should not allow proxies. We have a different philosophy, actually. We do. And I think that... Our general philosophy falls into at least four separate categories. I have them listed here. There are folks that allow proxies and use them. There are folks that allow proxies but do not use them. There are folks that do allow proxies but only if cards individually owned or owned by the group mm -hmm. so that you're all on a level playing field. And then there are folks that just outright deny, uh, outright, excuse me, deny the use of proxies. And I do want to tackle these in that same uh, turn order that I listed off. Sure. They do allow proxies and they use them. And you fall into that camp. Yeah, I absolutely 
love proxies and I feel like a lot of prominent members in our community and almost everybody um, that's vocal about it allows proxies and uses them. Um, I think the barrier to entry in CDH is the price and honestly, I want to play against the player, not necessarily their wallet. I can agree with that. And I think that there are budget commander channels that do a really good job of showing you the alternatives to some of the high power cards that we generally play with that still give you a good experience, but maybe not the most optimum or premium. And that's where proxies come in hand. So they're not inherently a problem unless someone in your group cares about their usage. And I find that you can butt heads a lot if you don't come to terms with who uh, or rather, who in your group is using proxies and whether they should be allowed to do it. I know some people get flustered when an entire deck is made out of proxies and you're losing yeah. to a time twister that that person couldn't otherwise afford. And I think part of that stems from the TCG mentality, the collector mentality, which falls into our next category here. But to end that first category of player, I think Jake B on a Patreon described it the best. I would much rather sit down to play against someone who has the ideal version of their deck rather than whatever they could scrape together given their budget. Hence the ideal version. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that is there the is no replacement for Time Twister. No. There isn't. I mean... And when people say Windfall is like the when thing... When people say Days I'm Doing, it's... Yes, for some decks, Narmaya, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a difference that there is no replacement for Imperial Seal. There's yeah. certain things that you just can't find a replacement for and a lot of people will say you know what instead of trying to find a replacement just play another card that's good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that um i will generally fall into the second category the second philosophy uh, but to just ruminate on that first category a little bit longer i understand why folks want to use proxies and i understand why they allow their groups to completely proxy their list because this game is rather expensive just do bear in mind that you're not gonna be able to play at a tournament, like a local tournament and or official tournament uh, if they do not allow proxies. So just mm -hmm. be sure to check the rulings at your local, you know, uh, LGS if they do or do not allow you to use proxies. I know yeah. some stores will permit proxies over a certain card uh, cost. So like the card $70 or more, they allow to use proxies. Check in first and foremost. But I think I fall into the second cam predominantly because... I have been a collector of many things. I used to collect Pokemon cards when they came out. I'm a huge fan of TCGs in general. Uh, it just so happens that I enjoy playing Magic the Gathering as well. But mm -hmm. I allow proxies, uh, but only of cards I currently own. And that's to save me from shifting them between decks, the actual copies. I know some people have like the staples binder they keep next to them when they mm -hmm. play games. They'll be like, oh, that is very obviously a proxy of Mox Diamond, but my real copy's in here. Sure. And then they'll show you the real copy. There's no concern about it. However, I feel like it's necessary to own the card just as a collector for me, for my own sake. However, I'm not going to condemn anyone for using a proxy okay. of the same card. That's good. I mean, yeah. it's a self-restriction that you're putting on yourself. Yeah, it feels weird. Like, I, um, you know, there are cards that I'll, for our recent deck tech for Tiny Bones, I'm going to build a better version of Tiny Bones, and I'm going to tell you which cards will make that better version possible, mm -hmm. but... That isn't to say I own said cards. Now, I own 99% of that deck, but a tabernacle, the Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale, I don't own that currently. Chains? At Chains of Mephistopheles, I'm buying. That's been on the short list for a while. It's a niche card, but things like that, I'm going to recommend them to you because you should be playing with them, but personally, when you see me play the list, if we meet in person, you're probably not going to see me running Chains and or Tabernacle on that list because I don't own copies and I don't want to use proxies. Why is that, though? Is it a sense of pride, or do you just, like... Well, it's like, here's the thing. For me, as a collectible trading card game, it only makes sense that the folks that caught on to the rarity or caught on to the value of a card early on, and because Time Twisters weren't always over 1K. Tabernacles were certainly not over 1K before. Chains of Mephistopheles was never like a $500 card until collectors and MTG finance people realized that, hey, this is a niche, very valuable card sure. at this mana cost, and they picked it up. So I feel like I missed that wagon to be an early collector of it. And part of me doesn't feel like I should be permitted to play that card unless I, I caught on to it early. I don't know. It's it's a weird... It's not necessarily pride, but I don't feel right playing the card if I don't own it. Because it's almost like having a cheat code in a game to me. Okay. Like, it doesn't feel right to do the thing or have some access to a thing 
that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. Do you feel like you don't want to play with the card because when it comes to an actual tournament, you won't be permitted to have that proxy? There's that too. Like, I have a Gold Border Guy's Cradle that I play in a separate list from my actual Guy's Cradle. And that's a card that's very expensive now, and I, I put money on that. I probably could have just proxied that Guy's Cradle. But mm -hmm. it's weird. Like, if I can own a card, a part of it feels... Part of it for me feels like, one, I'm supporting the game I enjoy, and two, I'm supporting my local community by purchasing from these stores. Like, that is a big part of it for me as well. So when I don't play with a proxy, it's because I couldn't, one, um, afford that value card, because mm -hmm. I'm sure no one wants to lose to a Chains of Mephistopheles that isn't a Chains of Mephistopheles. And secondly, I'm not supporting my local community in, in that same coin toss, like, it just feels, I don't know, it just, it's not yeah. degenerate or anything. I'm not sure. trying to say that people that don't play with the actual card are horrible people. It's just that I could do more for this game <laughs> as a supporter of the game and as a collector. Oh, and I'm, if I'm not meeting those requirements, personally speaking, I don't want to play the card. So many people would have hated me because when we went to Magic Fest, I like had a full proxy deck of Narmea. I owned all the real cards, but I brought the full proxy version, so I didn't have to worry about it when I played. You know, if someone wants to take my Gilded Drake, whatever. You know, no. you accidentally walked away with it. I didn't care because it was a FedEx paper yeah. proxy, and that was okay. And I guess that leads into the second point where we're, well, third point at this point, where yeah. we're talking about, you know, different types of proxies. Like, I'm personally okay with you just representing the card correctly, but. If you're writing out the proxy, I kind of don't like that. I, I want it to be yeah. straight on. Like I understand what that is. Yeah. So this is a this is a separate from our our technical philosophies, but I do feel like uh, what Justin's hitting on is something that we heard a lot about from our Patreon community as well as our Discord community is the proxy quality. Uh, so we can sort of do the offshoot on this really quick. I think it's some people will allow black and white proxies. Some Doesn't people matter, do not. Yeah. To, I don't look so long as I can see the image and understand yeah. what that card is. But if it's a different card with like a little paper slip or like napkin in front of it with the name of the card, that's not good enough. Like that's <laughs> not going to cut it. Yeah. And I don't want it shouldn't be on you to look up the card for me. And I shouldn't have to look up the card for myself. It should be on the card when you play it. And I that's mean, that's only fair. And like your FedEx printed list, like that was probably five dollars for you. It took a little bit of effort to cut the cards out. But it wasn't expensive. If you're going to you proxy, do. just put in the effort to make them look like real cards. Yeah. I don't care if they're like actually playing card quality. I just want to be able to see the actual image and identify it on this conflabulated battlefield. I wouldn't want to lose see to like a $6,000 deck that was completely written out on Arby's napkins, okay? Like, then I'll be annoyed. Then I'll be annoyed. Because I'd have to... Live. That game probably took 20 minutes longer than it should have because sure. we all had to look at your shit. But my FedEx list didn't piss you off? No, Great. because I can Done. see what you're playing. It had the actual working title, yes. CMC. It had all the... It's like a, when you copy an effect or a permanent in the game of Magic. Does it have all those qualities existing on the card itself? If it does, check off all those boxes, and I can see that that's a survival of the fittest. I'll be okay with it. Or in your instance, Ghostly Flicker. Perfect. I can read that as Ghostly Flicker. I get it. I know what you're doing. You're trying to win. Am I going to let you? I don't know yet. Probably but <laughs> this leads us into our third category of player of uh, uh, philosophy on proxying and that is you do allow proxies but only if someone in your group and or yourself owns said card and that's just i feel like this is more of a kitchen table local play group sort of thing where you are playing strictly with your friends and to keep the power levels balanced it's only right that if not everyone has an underground c no one should play with underground c if bob has an underground c we all get to play with underground c and that seems fair to me. That seems like the that most fair, fair right? take on proxies. I think the biggest thing when we were starting the magic was like, I got something ridiculous and you're like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. And it's like, that spiked the power level so hard. And if I'm personally just playing with like a mana crypt and you're not, that puts you at such a disadvantage. It really does. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yes, 100%. I feel like you should proxy and you could totally have that. And I like this ideal that... Um, you know, if, if you just allow proxies that are in your playgroup, totally fine. We're keeping things even. The biggest thing about Magic is keeping things at a level that everyone is having fun. The moment someone spikes the power level and becomes CEDH when they're high-powered all around everywhere else, yeah. it's really not fun anymore. Your pup's not man. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. So I think it's great within closed groups if you can maintain that. 
Obviously, if you're playing with strangers at a local game store or you're just going to an event, you can't always guarantee that they're gonna have the same uh, philosophy as you on the use of proxies. And of course, you might be, and this, uh, just to touch on our second topic here again, uh, of philosophy, if you allow proxies but don't permit yourself to use proxies, mm -hmm. that you can put yourself at a disadvantage. Like maybe you can't afford a Mona Crypt right now and you're not allowing yourself to use a Mana Crypt, you are gonna be a step behind the person with the more efficient list because there's nothing to substitute out for Mana Crypt. No. And a lot of these cards that are being proxied, like a Gilded Drake, it's nothing to substitute for a 2CMC, I steal your thing. There's really nothing to substitute for that. So don't put yourself at a disadvantage. If you are on this third philosophical path, I think that's great for a close-knit gamer group. I don't think it's going to be great when you take your deck out into the wild. Obviously, you're going to want to own the cards at that point. Totally. Uh, but I do think that's a great way for folks to jump into the game as a group of players, a group of friends, starting with a four-man pod. Mm -hmm. And I think Frank B. put it best his thoughts on what this third philosophy is all about. General consensus in my playgroup is to have proxies of cards you own. Usually though, the playgroup will find cards with similar effects to the card they don't own instead of using proxies in that way. So if they haven't all caught up to that particular card, then they will help each other find the substitutes or help each other find the cards to get them sure. at that same power level. And I think that's really fair with a close-knit gamer group. In a close-knit group, that's excellent. Yeah. But that fourth philosophy, the folks that do not permit proxies, I can still understand that because I think the thing that we always need to draw an arrow back to is the fact that MTG is a TCG. And a lot of people do care. It's not that their wallet is bigger than yours, because again, you know, Time Twisters, all these expensive cards weren't always that expensive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been collecting for years since this game started, back with Alpha, like all, The Dark, all those sets when they came out, they were collecting the packs and buying the boosters and they were getting them when they were dirt cheap. So I can understand where they feel as a collector that it's not fair that you have the same advantages they do because they've been collecting longer. I do understand that. And I'm not gonna say to anyone that they're wrong with their opinion. That is sort of where I feel the no proxy mentality comes from. At it's least from what I've been reading. It's like I've collected this, I've spent like my hard-earned money towards this, or I made a great spec and look how it paid off. Like, I get it. Um, and, you know, that's how tournaments are run. You know, yeah. straight up, if you don't own the card, you cannot proxy it. Especially in a, uh, you know, a format where you need four copies of a given card. And... It's even rougher when you need four copies of Mox Diamond or four copies of whatever you know said value card was. Mm -hmm. In Commander Singleton, we have it a little bit easier. But what I think with at least our format in particular, no proxies. Like if someone in your group is of that philosophy, you either do or do not agree and play or do not play with that person. And you can't change that person's mind and or substitute that belief in any way because it's also a fallacy like if we were to start allowing proxies in tournaments you know then why would you even own the card yeah well that's the real card that's another issue entirely because i think it's different with your gamer group right it's different with your gamer group mm -hmm. i think by and large though that fourth philosophy rings the most true because if you're going to take your deck out and play at a tournament uh odds are likely they're not going to let you play with you know eight or 12 of the cards that are in your list because yeah. they aren't real. So I think it's keeping a realistic view on the game. But I think if you're gonna play with your pals and you're gonna play locally, it just depending on the game store, check in with them, check in with the people playing there. I think proxies are a fair substitute for the real thing, particularly if you want to elevate your commander games because people always separate the two, commander and competitive commander. It's all one game, okay? It's all, it's all the same format. The only difference being competitive commander uses more efficient cards. And I think the larger issue with proxies, the real problem here is that for some reason or other, whether it's pride, the collectability aspect, um, in budget, first and foremost, people are swayed against playing a competitive game. So to you, I think proxies are fair game if everyone's okay with them. I think everyone should be playing competitive commander because it's a fun format to play. And I think the overall consensus is we are all okay with proxies. Yeah. I think what's interesting, it was Our group. Um, even before COVID, like the most recent giant tournament that they had, I think it was in Pennsylvania, that Ernesto went to. Mm -hmm. This is back when Flash Hulk was a huge thing. Yeah. With the new fish that came out. This was Sushi Hulk, they called it. 
the meta there was very low on Sushi Hulk, and it was very high on Fringe, and that's because this was a no-proxy tournament, and this was because people did not have all the cards to make that list. They didn't have the duels. They didn't have the Time Twister. And at the end of the day, it wasn't necessarily reflective of the actual CEDH meta. No. I don't think so. It's interesting to see as well, to bounce off this idea of the use of proxies against their non-use, uh, the uprising of more fringe lists. Because in truth, if you're playing a deck that has Teshar at the helm, no one's really going to care, probably even understand what Teshar is doing. Because it's not what they regularly see, like sure. what the competitive players are actually playing with. So you are at a, an advantage there. And in most cases, your deck is probably going to be a lot more affordable too, depending on what you put in it. I think the biggest thing about not allowing proxies is when you have an established CDH top tier meta, which we pretty much do at this point, not everyone can play that. So when you meet up in person and you have these huge tournaments, you're going to see a lot more fringe. And that's particularly what Patrick likes to play. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's weird because it's called fringe. It's just like... For folks that don't understand that term, it's really just the less played list. It doesn't mean it a, it's a lesser lesser list, it's a lesser deck or strategy. It's just the list that's not commonly played because it doesn't have the easy go-to A plus B super efficient combo lines in it. Again, that doesn't make it bad. So anytime you see a list on the show, and it's funny because sometimes I'll get remarks that like, yeah, this list isn't competitive or... I don't understand like it's how is this how is this winning i'm like well i don't know play the game because at the end of the day regardless of whether your deck has proxies or not regardless of whether you have the real tabernacle or not luck is going to be at the forefront of every single draw and every single instance in your game where you sit at the table that is going to be at the, the utmost of whose percentile of win is going to happen because i played a game the other night where for 13 turns i never drew a land and i didn't do anything in that game for 13 turns look player how you command the cards that are in your list doesn't matter what they are and then your budget right it's getting the real cards or proxying the night that's the unfortunate version of all of this it's the budget is such a barrier to getting into this game but i think the point that we're trying trying to drive home here is that everyone pretty much says yes to proxies tournaments however say no to proxies and tournaments not saying yes to proxies is kind of a fallacy. I mean, if we say yes, then why own the card in the first place? If we say no, then you don't have a true meta, which we've kind of established already for CEDH. So is there an in-between? And can we work towards an in-between? Can you budget or can you proxy X cards? So yes, solving that dilemma, I think, would entail that the group organizers, the folks running these games, do permit x amount of proxies because for a lot of us who want to play this game and luckily justin and i are perhaps in a better financial situation than some we or we've just been collecting we were really lucky when we caught on to these trends and pick up the cards that we own the staples we own now but with the prominence of the competitive scene rising you see a lot of upticks in prices so mm -hmm it's gonna be more difficult for people to jump into the competitive CH scene. So I think allowing X amount of proxies, like allowing five of your cards in your list to be proxied, right? And that could be for your five colored list, a lot of those duels. It could be for your three colored list, just a handful of those staples. Yeah. Again, like getting the Gilder Drake in there, getting the, I mean, Mox Opal was expensive before, but like a Mox Diamond, things of that nature. I think that would be permissible in I my I would love opinion. if tournaments started to gear towards this ideology. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but at the end of the day, it's like, if I'm sitting across and you're playing a full FedEx deck, I don't care. If yeah. I lose to it, I don't care. Some people care. I get that. Um, but as a collector's point of view, you know, I, I actually don't own a Time Twister and I won't... Well, that's a lie because I'll play it in Naru. Yeah. Well, you have a <laughs> you have a collector's edition Time Twister. Yeah. And that's not technically tournament legal, but that it was printed by... A, Magic the Gathering, you know what I mean? Like, that is a, an official Wizards of the Ghost it's real to me. card. It's an official <laughs> product of the game. Um, but I can understand that. And then, in that instance, you know, hopefully they'll allow you that one proxy. But the thing is, there, you know, you're going to have to have people checking all the proxies and then checking the rest of the deck. It adds to the time the tournament will take if you just didn't allow proxies in, entirely. 
you know. So that's that's the larger issue here. And the thing is, with Commander, there aren't really large scale tournaments. There aren't huge cash prizes being offered, at least by uh, Magic the Gathering. There's like there's no real scene for it yet. But with its popularity and its prominence, this may be a dilemma moving into the future. So it will definitely be a dilemma moving into the future. I think um, you know, even with the rise of Command Fest before this virus, like this was a huge thing. People really liked coming to a Magic Fest, buying a pass, getting specific seating, barred off from everything else, and playing actual tournaments and actual matches for prizes. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. Yeah, so moving forward, who knows what the scene's going to be like, how many proxies are going to be out there floating in the wild. <laughs> I mean, how many proxies you thought you were, you were buying a legitimate card? That's even worse. But that's a completely different problem we're not touching on today. But those are, in general, the four main philosophies we believe exist in the world of proxies. And whether they're a problem for, or not in your group, I'd love to hear in the comment section down below. I'm curious as to your philosophy on the use of proxies. Should it or should it not be allowed? I think, in general, everyone's going to have a different philosophy. No one's opinion isn't wrong here. But it's something you just need to square away with your group. There's three other people playing with you. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions from people outside looking in is, you know, I can't afford this. I can't play with these types of people. These people are, like, really, like, adamant. Like, they have these ridiculously bling decks. No. If you go ahead and you want to play with us, the CEDH community in general, and you bring a full proxy deck, good for you. Because I just want to play against you. If you understand the cards, great. Let's play. Yeah. Budget player. Luck. Somewhere up there. <laughs> but that's the fact of the matter. But guys, look, if you can't afford the cards and you really want to, despite our encouragement of proxies, you can do so via the link in the description. TCG player. Buy all those duels. Buy all those reserve list cards before any other scalpers, any other MTG finance people pick them up for you. And do so knowing that a portion of those proceeds will go to help the channel. That is the, some of the best, best magic card buying you could have done this week. Also, if you want to help to support the channel directly, you can do so. The tequila is getting me. <laughs> do so via Anchor, the site you're listening to this on, and or Patreon. And at this point, I do want to say a special thanks to all of our Patreon members. And a special thanks for committing to the conversation over on Patreon. We yeah. do have a small gathering of players on there right now, 60. But you guys are, one, some of the best supporters of this show because you're supporting us not only with your thoughts, but your wallet. And that does go a long way. But secondly, these conversations we're having are great because I'd love to get an in-depth view on your opinions on these topics. It really I think just... going forward, like, we should do this more. We should yeah. really poll the members, like, what do you feel about this right now? Because I think we've got a lot of different and great opinions. Yeah, no, it, for sure. That's definitely, uh, that's definitely on my mind moving forward. So be on the lookout. Anytime I'll, I'll tag something as, like, you know, um, comment requested or... We'll figure it out over on the Patreon, but I would love your opinions on future topics because it helps to prime us for these discussions as well. But going down the list, Rory, Brian, Mikey Boy, thank you so much for your patronage. Trevor, Landers, Paul Go. Paul Go. Like Pokemon Go. Did you ever play Pokemon Go? No, I never did. Pokemon Showdown. That's where it really is. But Paul, he's more a fan of Pokemon Go. <laughs> Corwin. Schmabby Tenenbaum, Tim. These names are, are randomized now. I'm so confused by this. Tim, uh, thank you so much for your patronage. You know, it's not alphabetical order because we normally start with... Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> Kevin N, Sir Fluffykins, thank you so much for your patronage. Uh, Matthew K, Kevin B, Submox1. Sub you, know, you know that guy. Oh, I thought it was Submox Own. So it could be like Submox Ozone. Own. Ozone? Yeah, sure. Open X. Yeah, we can say that. We'll just say your name differently every time. Submox Own. Thank you for the Dranith Magistrate. <laughs> I haven't bought one from him yet, but I know he in the future the I will be, right? Yeah. Uh, Adam, Dante, Sarah, thank you so much for your patronage. Joshua, Matthew, Renal, Trent, Gregory, Harry. Harry, thank you guys so much. Harry, uh, Trent is no brew, by the way, in case you wanted to know. It is. Yes. I've lost to a Scarab God list plenty. <laughs> Dave, Leo, Chris, Carl, Craig, thank you for your patronage. Um, Mason? Mason, yeah. Uh, Paul, Jake, frankly, Gullius with a G. Gullius with a G. And Xiao Fan, thank you guys so much for your patronage. You guys are some of the best Moxen on the market. 
What's the best Mox? What's the best Mox? Uh, it's In Vintage pro- Cube, what would you say? That's probably going to be freaking Mox... Uh, what is it, Sapphire? Is he actually, yeah, he knows. the yeah, one that true. plays all the blue spells, the one that yeah. helps you with all the power nine. <laughs> yeah, yep. go figure. Bruno, Jason, Kev, T, Ali B. Thank you guys for your patronage. Burton, Josh, Clyde, Shaded, Frank, Bijan. Jarn. 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 Silent Thank B. Thank you guys. Silent B. Silent B. Silent B. Always gets me. <laughs> yeah, those are the name of my ex, too. Jared, Brendan, Shord, Nathan. You did it a bit, a, a Jarn? <laughs> no, Silent B. <laughs> I'm going to say nickname of my ex. Oh. She was actually great. Um, <laughs> Nathan, thank you guys so much for your patronage. Honestly, you can guild my Drake any day. Got ten more, bro. Just ten more? I know. Javier, <laughs> Oliver, The Holy Knight, yes. and Sam. <laughs> thank you guys for your patronage. Running Red, Jordan, Nick, Luke, Leon, and Mace. Clearing Solid. it out. Solid. Ending it. You guys are the best. I'm so confused as to why this was randomized. This I like it, though, it? because now people have to really listen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, shit. When are they going to <laughs> when thank am I coming? for my efforts? What's the worst mox? What is the worst mox? Pearl. Probably the, yeah, Pearl. Probably the white one. <laughs> if we're going to be honest. But guys, I'm Patrick Marlott. Justin Rodriguez. And happy Thank Lord. you for the proxies. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. Genuinely. Keep sending them. <laughs>